All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined, rejoined, actually welcome back, Justin Moy, who's in Kansas City. How are you doing, Justin? Yeah, John, I'm great, man. It's uh, some deja vu. I was excited for our paths to cross again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deja vu all over again. <laughs> uh, and uh, and so when uh, when Justin was 18, he was uh, in real estate sales in the Bay Area, California, the third most competitive market at the time. And I can attest to that having lived there during some of the worst times for housing <laughs> in the dot-com era and all that. <laughs> uh, cold call owners all day. It's, it's six months straight with zero success. So um, he saw one more lead. Uh, pop up, you were just about to quit. One last call, call would turn into your first listing and purchase, netting a 60,000K commission. So, yeah. what we're going to talk about today is um, passive income investing, but as it relates to salespeople, because you've got an interesting business model, Justin, is where you're, is you're, you're working with salespeople, but helping them yeah. to invest yeah. their money better. So, tell yeah. us a little bit yeah. about how you made this pivot. Yeah, so I've always been a really big advocate of investing um, in anything. I've always researched it. I've always kind of geeked out on that. That was the one thing like financial services and returns and compounding interests and different investment vehicles that always really excited me. And when I was in sales, one of the biggest things that I wanted to address that really got me into the investing space is looming burnout. And I think a lot of salespeople can relate to that because this is a very lucrative field, um, but you got to work for it. You know, it's not uncommon that my colleagues and even my friends now they're putting in 60 plus hours a week and sure. they're making great money. Um, and maybe they even like that. They like the hustle. They like to feel like they're very busy. They like to, you know, go pedal to the metal and those people really thrive in those environments. But I knew that I wanted something more, right? And so I was looking at investing. And when you look at traditional investment strategies, I just didn't really like what I was finding. I, I didn't I didn't think that I could make it the 40 plus years of working at the pace I was working at. I didn't want to stack up this big retirement account and live off of 4% of that. And, and anybody who understands inflation mm -hmm. and understands the loss, lack of social security being depleted knows that that's really a recipe for retiring in complete poverty at the mm -hmm. pace we're going. Right, right. So, I looked for all, what what we call alternative investments, but really to me, they should be alternative things like real estate or things like businesses. And it provided me a way to actually replace my income with completely passive income within 10 years, hmm. which is just it's astonishing. I mean, people are going to work 40, 50 years to stack up for retirement because to me, they're looking at it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So when I when I was doing this business, of course, with my background in sales, a lot of our investors were salespeople. They invest passively in, in commercial real estate alongside me and my company. Um, but it really helped them address some big gaps that salespeople don't really get addressed when they're looking at conventional investing strategies. The first thing is their burnout. A lot of salespeople, they yep. don't want to work the 60 plus hour work weeks for long. So you should have investing strategies that can save you from that life. Your hard work mm -hmm. now should reduce drastically the time to retirement for you, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, second is the downturns in the economy. Yep. Well, we invest in a lot of times real estate assets traditionally have performed well during downturns. And as much as salespeople don't like to, to put uh, their efforts into the outer or not mm -hmm. put things on their own th themselves, you can't help but know when downturns in the economy come, your paycheck gets impacted too. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. um, just explain to explain to everybody the fire movement. Yeah, yeah, fire movement. So it stands for financial independence and retire early. So it's a, it's a specific type of investing because you can invest for a lot of reasons. Now, if you're part of the fire movement, you literally want that. You want to retire as fast as possible. So mm -hmm. you typically are looking for passive income streams. Now you can also retire, or I'm sorry, invest with the thought of, hey, I want to build up massive wealth or, Hey, I want my children to know me and my grandchildren right. to benefit from my actions. There's all sorts of ways to invest. We like the fire movement because I want to be able to retire extremely early and I want people to be able to buy back their time 
and really not have to work their whole lives, right? A lot of people, they retire when they're 60 or maybe even 70, who knows what the age will be in a couple mm -hmm. of years. Um, and they maybe don't have the energy or the drive to do the things that they wanted to do in life at that point. Mm -hmm. So that's a really specific type of investing that we right. really believe in. And the strategies we use are the ones that I could see getting there the fastest. Right. And and then, so talk to me a little bit about the kind of investments themselves um, yeah. that are available. Because as you said, I mean, most people, when they think of investing, they just think stocks and bonds and whatever. Yeah. They don't really think about it. And they think, oh, yeah, real estate. Yeah, I've heard about people doing well in real estate and passive income, but that sounds like it takes a lot of money and I don't have that or the experience. Yeah. So just explain for people what those investments mm -hmm. options look like. Yeah. So we use a strategy and if somebody wants to look it up more called syndications, and really it's a fancy term for you and the investors bring the down payment and the working capital of a deal. Our partners or our team does all the work. So the investments are a hundred percent passive. And when the deal is said and done, you're going to get actually majority of the profits as the investor. So it's way different from stock market. I'm, I'm actually not a really big fan of the public mm -hmm. markets. If you analyze the returns of the public markets since the 2000s, they've just plummeted. Um, the 80s and the 90s, they were on fire. You couldn't lose since the 2000s. They, they've really plummeted and mm -hmm. haven't been producing what they produced. in the past. <laughs> you, you couldn't lose until you did. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't. I mean, really, the 80s and the 90s, so 20 year period, I think there were 13 years of double digit gains and like mm -hmm. two years of losses. Yeah. So you couldn't lose. Ever since then, it's been way more of a roller coaster. Your your average annual return, they say, is eight percent, but if you factor in losses, it's going to be actually closer to four to six percent. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't provide that return that it used to, and it doesn't provide the tax benefits that that real estate does as well. So there's so many advantages, and when you invest in a syndication, essentially what we do is we buy commercial properties. So these things are millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. We have a deal that we're going to be releasing soon. It's going to be $24 million of a down payment and, and a rehab cost. Now, most people don't have $24 million. Sure. <laughs> so what we do is we come in and we say, hey, our investors will come together to make up $24 million. And some people will invest, you know, 25,000, 50,000. Some people, our biggest investors are 700,000 to date. Mm -hmm. So people from all walks of life come and invest. And we take down these really large assets. And that's how you get exclusive access to these big deals that these you used to have to be a hedge fund to, to have access right. to, but now they're way more wildly available. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, what kind of commercial real estate is performing well right now? Because obviously there's a lot of transitions going on in, in the yeah. commercial real estate uh, market itself right now. So yeah, that's why maybe people will be going, really? Commercial real estate? Yeah, commercial real estate to be an investor. I'm so I'm super excited for these next probably two years. Mm -hmm. So part of what we do too is we host actually uh, monthly webinars, and our last webinar was about an update in the commercial real estate markets. So in times of corrections and times of interest rate environments changing, which is what we're in now, that's when you should be the most excited to invest. Mm -hmm. That's when the largest transfers of wealth happen, and that's when you can really get in the game. A lot of people, they look back at times, you know, the, the dot com bust or the, the 08 bubble. They say, man, I wish I could go back and just buy everything that I could. Right. Well, that hindsight's 2020, right? But if you look at what we have now, we're in again a transitional market. This is the perfect time to buy. So, commercial real estate assets, what we really like, we really like multifamily apartment mm -hmm. buildings. Right. We really like self storage, which is mm -hmm. uh, both of those have performed very well historically during recessions. And we really like short term rentals and big funds, lots of lots of uh, short term rental properties all at once. Those three assets are performing very strong right now. Multifamily is hurting the most out of those. But when you're buying into that hurt into that pain, you're actually coming out much higher on top. So right. those are the three asset classes that we like the most. And we're exploring some others. But those are like the three foundationals that most people are going to be investing in because they have a great mixture of returns and safety. Yeah. And it's funny because, uh, you know, most people, they, they wouldn't have thought of uh, like self storage or short term. Yeah. The self storage is an, is a, is quite a fascinating one because if you look around, I mean, they're just, they're everywhere and they're always full. <laughs> yeah. And they're great because you have to look at the macro economics of what's going on. Mm -hmm. New developments, just like everything else, it's shrinkflation. They get yep. smaller. They get smaller, all the new construction, all the new properties that are getting built, just the economics of it, smaller units and jam packing more units in their works. It makes sense. 
And the reason why self-storage has historically done so well during downturn of the economy is because when people have to downgrade because yeah. they're on financial financial hardships, they don't want to get rid of all that stuff. And it's a very low cost business because you're not dealing with you know a lot of toilets and tenants live in there, or AC units most of the yep. time, unless you have indoor storage. So there's a lot of stuff that you remove from the equation that are additional risk and can really optimize for business. At the end of the day, it's just storage. Yeah. Four walls and a lock. <laughs> yeah, it's a great business though. I mean, I have to say, I mean, even the storage unit I have, I've never even spoken to anybody. Never <laughs> met anybody. Just did do everything with an app on my phone. Go yeah. in <laughs> You're the best tenant. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, so tell me, Justin, as you were just saying, like uh, buying into or investing, I mean, what are the kind of um, levels at which one can get in? Yeah. So you mean as, as like investment amounts? Yes. yes, yes. Yeah. I would say if you're going to look at private placement real estate, which is what we do, I would be comfortable with at least investing $25,000. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because a couple things. First is these are illiquid investments. Yep. So you're really invested in real estate. It's not like the stock market or even if some people understand what a REIT is, a real estate investment trust, yeah. a lot of those are stocks. So they buy and sell at will. Mm. So you want to have enough cash that you're okay with an illiquid investment. Most of the time between three and six years is the time period you're looking at. Right. So you want to be okay with that. Um, the second is you get tax benefits for this. So because of it's an actual ownership in real estate, you will get tax forms for them and you will it will impact your taxable income. Not tax advice, but it always ends up working out better for you. If you pay right. a lot of taxes, which again, a lot of salespeople do, mm -hmm. you want to start kind of looking at different tax advantage investing strategies to complement and offset some of that income. Mm -hmm. Ask your CPA about it, not tax advice. Yeah. Um, but those are some of the key things you want to think. So if you have, I would budget about $25,000 as a minimum to get into the game here, because that's what most of these larger deals are investing in. Again, you know, our purchase price right now, we're, we're, at, we're raising $24 million. Tough to do that you know, sure. a thousand bucks at a time. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we just have to, the bigger, the best deals have these higher buy-ins. For sure. For sure. And then what kind of, what kind of returns can one expect? And obviously there's no guarantees yeah. in life about yeah. anything, but I mean, what, what, what are, what are kind of typical returns you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a few different strategies. Um, just to keep it as 10,000 foot view, yeah, yeah. if you're going to go very heavy cash flow, which might be the right scenario for you, it just depends. I don't know. I would expect about a 10% paid out monthly mm -hmm. cash flow, right? 10% on the year paid out monthly, completely passive, 100% passive. So your only job is to send your investment and the operations team does all the work and then sends you a check. If you're doing heavier projects that require more of a lift, which is typically what we do, mm -hmm. I would say you can get closer to, I'm going to give you a big range, 15, about 25% mm -hmm. per year, um, including the tax benefits with it. Mm -hmm. So different strategies, depending on where you're at in your investing journey, um, a lot of people, if they're, they go through a growth mode where they want to build a lot of equity, they might look for those 15 to 25% plays. And then eventually they'll take their foot off that gas and flip it into, you know, a, a longer term cash flow play. But I would say you, you should expect double digit returns for the type of assets that you're looking for. Yeah. And, and typically, uh, you know, typically how long, how long do these, uh, how long do people stay in the fund? Yeah, I would say most deals and every deal you're going to actually have a marketing package for. So you'll see what the business plan is. If you're going to do a shorter term deal, they generally are going to be between three and six years, mm -hmm. something, whether it's a sale or a refinance and kind of a return of that investment. If you're in a longer term deal, most commercial loans are going to be about, if they're longer term, seven years to, right. to a little bit longer, they could go up to 35 years. Mm -hmm. But most of the people, if it's a longer term deal, it'll be between seven and 10. We'll see. Right until you're going to refinance or look to do something else. So somewhere mm -hmm. in between there, and again, depends on the strategy. If you want something quicker, because you want to multiply your investments fast, you know, three to three to six years, pretty reasonable, more long-term, I would just say seven to 10. Right, right. And as you said, I mean, this is completely passive. So you do all the heavy list lifting. So other than yeah. qualifying and giving you the money and then sitting, but what, what else is required from the investor? That's really it. I mean, the biggest thing is you want to do your due diligence up front, right? You want to vet guys like me, um, mm -hmm. right? Make sure we know what we're talking about. Make sure we know what we're doing. Make sure we're also investing our cash into the deals that we advertise. I think mm -hmm. that's a really big one. Um, and make sure that you like the deal. And it's a business plan that fits your investing strategy. 
So a lot of times sales guys or girls will come to me and they'll say, yeah, I have a ton of money. I, I just don't know what to do with it. I throw it into this portfolio. I throw it into the stocks. And the first step is like, well, just talk to me about it. Like, What right. is your goal? If your goal is to retire within 10 years, which is very, very possible. Okay. We have, have a lifeline, a kind of a, a laid out plan of what that looks like. If you just want to throw it into cash flowing investments and you don't really care to retire in, in really fast, it's no problem. We can do that too. So you just want to understand what your goal is and have an outline to how to get there as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And I guess for for some people, like the idea of you saying like, oh, you, you know, you could retire in 10 years. I mean, that's, you know, some people be like, yeah, it sounds fantastic, but yeah. is it is it realistic? I mean, so just yeah. talk me talk me through um, why that it can be realistic and some of your success stories without yeah. naming anyone. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to learn more about it, you can even go to retire within 10 bundle.com and 10 is the number. So one zero. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you'll put, you know, we can get yeah, you the we, link to put in yeah. the notes, but there I'll walk you through an actual calculator. I would tell you most of my people, when they approach me, they can retire actually within five to seven years. And it's because of the way that compounding investments work and mm -hmm. depending on how aggressively you want to invest. Right. Yeah. So, really it's extremely possible we've had success stories of people retiring at 28 not 29 um, just into their 30s or, or below 40. so this is really really possible in commercial real estate and again it's not marketed much because the charles schwabs of the world really can't make money on it right so it's more of a kept secret but these are the investments if you look at the ultra wealthy and the the very very high net worth individuals their asset allocations tend to be at least 50% alternatives, which is real estate and businesses. And we're seeing less and less of that make up stocks as the years go on. Okay. And I guess, I mean, it, it, there's going to be, obviously, there's going to be a lot of innovation and changes in commercial real estate and repurposing, you know, buildings for, for sure. modern reality. So where do you, where do you see the future of commercial real estate? I mean, given that the day of, you know, the days yeah. of malls are probably behind us, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, even office buildings to some degrees because you have, you know, a lot more people working remotely. But what, what yeah. do you see as some of the exciting things in the future for, for commercial real estate? Yeah. So some asset classes that are going to be, I think, within the next 10 years, really, really big ones that we want to start talking about now. First is data centers. Mm. So you see AI for everything popping up now. Yeah. So I don't know if that's because the aliens came back down and gave us some technology. Like, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden data centers are this e enormous demand and they're really low maintenance, but they have to have certain key items in them that are hard to get. So right. data centers are going to be huge. Now, there's also a lot of research on reshoring initiatives, meaning mm. we produce almost everything in China now or in yeah. Asia and ship it over here, which means warehousing and logistics centers by the ports are very high demand. A lot of that because of China's wage increasing, their labor mm -hmm. force decreasing, their energy costs increasing. It's actually cheaper to reshore to South America than it is to outsource to China for many manufacturers. So we're going to see an increase in demand by the southern border for things right. like industrial properties, for warehousing. And if you look at the, the statistics on shipping, we actually went from well, by the time you buy something to it getting delivered, what companies would do is they would wait for the order, then order it from China, then get yeah. it. It was about a 10 day delay. Right now you're running like a negative two day delay, meaning companies are prioritizing keeping stock on hand mm -hmm. because they saw how one little mess up in the logistics chain can really throw off their business. Yep. So warehousing is going to be really big too. A lot of companies realize how valuable it is, have stock on hand, even though it increases their overhead. So data centers and southern border logistics centers and warehousing throughout the country. And then the standards multifamily will continue to thrive. Sure. We just have a housing shortage in this country and many markets are going to struggle to, to catch up to supply, to, to demand. Yeah, no, uh, hundred percent, and, th and that's a and th that underlines my point that we said earlier about the fact that uh, you know commercial real estate there are a lot of different options there more than people yeah. people even realize. Yeah, I mean, data centers answer hundred percent. Yeah, with AI because it's going to be so much computing power needed and places yep. for those machines. 
And um, yeah, maybe I should, uh, since I'm in San Diego, maybe I should run down the board and see if there's any yeah. warehouses, cheap warehouses. Get yourself for some land, man. It, it matters. It matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is great. Well, listen, Justin, this has been fantastic. Uh, all of Justin's information will be below this video, as we mentioned uh, in the links. But before we go, Justin, do tell people just a little bit more about you and your business. Yeah. So I, I truly believe that I'm here to help salespeople retire within 10 years. That's my goal. That's why I wake up. That's why I go to bed early so I can wake up earlier tomorrow and do the same thing. I love serving salespeople because I was there mm -hmm. and I know how underserved it is. If you look up investing strategies for sales professionals, do it on Google. You don't get anything. You get invest in courses, which are great. You should invest in yourself first, but you don't get good strategies. Right. If you look up for doctors and dentists and chiropractors, engineers, like you get a ton of stuff. So we're kind of out here on our own. So mm -hmm. if you want to avoid that burnout, if you want to level out those slower months with passive income, if you want to protect yourself from downturns in the economy, if you want to reduce your dependency on your W-2, because we all know in the back of our mind, we're a bad quarter away from being exited from where mm -hmm. we're at. Yeah. If you want to reduce that, that dependency, you want to avoid burnout, you want a way out. We can help with that. That's what I do all day, every day. That's what I love doing. Fantastic. Uh, as I said, go check it out. Uh, could be just exactly what you're looking for. And what's the best time to start investing, Justin? Yeah, 10 years ago. And the second <laughs> best time is now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Listen, thanks again, Justin. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.